time I was assigned uh, to the Pentagon <clears throat> in the uh, Air Force officer personnel. And uh, there was a selection process which uh, I don't know too much about, but I wound up talking to Admiral Radford, who was the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, who had been to told by his uh, uh, executive officer uh, that the vice president was in sad need of some military aid assistance, as assistance, military aids. Uh, he had accompanied the Nixon party when they went around the world in 1953, and uh, uh, he had seen that uh, uh, the, the vice president did not have much of a staff. So he really kept on after uh, the vice president uh, about taking military aids, and the vice president did not want to. He was not, he just wasn't enthusiastic about it, but Admiral Radford kept pushing him. So it wound up that uh, I was selected, and uh, uh, another, the other uh, was uh, Colonel uh, Robert uh, Cushman, who was a Marine. And he and I were selected to go with the Nixon party on the trip around Alaska, or, or I'm sorry, around Africa. Uh, I, we were taken over to meet the vice president, and he was cordial and welcomed us to uh, his staff, and said he looked forward to having us uh, as uh, members of his traveling party. And uh, we uh, started the job, and we were gone three weeks. I worked, and uh, I worked more with Mrs. Nixon, and uh, the colonel worked with uh, the, uh, the vice president directly. Then, uh, yes, the decision was made as a result of the two three-week trial that Colonel Cushman would remain and he would be the military security guy, the uh, uh, national security advisor, and that I could go back to the Air Force. But Rosemary Woods, uh, who uh, uh, really felt the need for uh, assistance, went to the vice president and uh, uh, talked to him and convinced him that to keep me to replace uh, the uh, the uh, appointment secretary who was leaving uh, to go on maternity leave. So I started as more of an assistant, uh, as a, a, an appointment secretary uh, on a daily basis and then uh, as a, a, a situation would arise where he needed a military aid, I'd put a uniform on and perform those functions. So uh, I started to account as right away I would accompany him to functions in the evening uh, or whenever there, whenever there was a need uh, 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 for uh, uh, oh, formalities at, a, at ceremonies and so forth, I would be there to uh, attend uh, uh, to the vice president. The first one was Africa, the second was uh, South America, uh, where we had the problem at Caracas. The third was uh, uh, the trip to uh, uh, England for the the uh, uh, dedication of the uh, uh, window at St. Paul's uh, Cathedral. Uh, the next was for us. The fourth would be for the, the Soviet Union for the national, the American national uh, uh, display. And uh, as, as vice president, uh, that would be all, as vice president, yeah. We, we didn't really have any knowledge of how bad a, a welcome it was, it was we were going into. We knew that we were going to have a, a, some trouble, uh, but we didn't expect what we had. And the, the embassy had uh, really given us a problem. They should have, knowing what the situation was, they should have moved the motorcade closer to the airplane. 
so that we could, and also to cancel the, the welcoming ceremony because the crowd was out of, almost out of hand, even at the airport. And as a result, uh, the cars were outside of the uh, uh, terminal, so we had to walk through the terminal, which meant we had to walk under two balconies, which was loaded with people who were spitting down on us. And uh, to make matters worse, just as we approached the inner uh, 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 side of the, the inner entrance, the, uh, national, the band struck up the national anthem of Venezuela, so we had to stand at attention while they above kept spitting down on us. And then we walked out the other side and got it from that side too. Uh, so then we expected that we would have protection uh, from the police or the army or both uh, on, the, on the way to lay a wreath uh, at, a, at a, to lay a, re, a, a wreath for uh, one of the uh, presidents of, Mex uh, of uh, Venezuela. And we started to go there, but uh, it became apparent that if we had gone, we would have probably been killed because the, the ceremony was in a cul-de-sac. So once we got in, we'd probably never get out. And we ran into three ambushes along the way, and uh, the, this is where the road would be blocked by a truck or by people, and then the crowd would swarm around us. Uh, and they were, they were uh, uh, throwing rocks, uh, they had pipes, they had clubs, they, were, they smashed the windows of the car, cars, and they uh, stripped the flags from them, they uh, dented the, 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 the doors and so forth, and they started to rock the cars to tip us over, uh, which uh, would have been, I think, fatal. Uh, and uh, in any event, with the help of, uh, of well, about six or seven uh, Secret Service agents, we managed to, and one truck driver who, uh, the press had a truck, and that driver finally got, was able to w work us so that he would clear the way for us. And we went up directly to the residence, which was located up on a hill and was se secured by a gate down below which gave us a measure of security uh, for uh, the, the Vice President, Mrs. Nixon, and uh, uh, the, our second, the, the second car. Uh, and we, uh, we went, went there and, uh, to take stock of where, where, what we would do next. See, yeah. Nixon was, a, it was, it was marvelous. She, uh, she never the, she never showed any signs of fear or uh, excitement. She was very busy. She had her arms around the, uh, the, the uh, wife of the, minister, the foreign minister of Venezuela, who was definitely hysterical. She was uh, crying and it looked like she was going out of her mind. Mrs. Nixon was doing her best throughout this entire uh, period she, Mrs. Nixon was keeping her as comfortable and as calm, uh, trying to calm her down. Uh, she never uttered a sound uh, that I can remember that ind would indicate to uh, me any fear, any concern that she had. We have one Secret Service agent in the front seat. He had his weapon. He never drew it, but he, he could have. Uh, uh, but uh, it was probably better that he didn't. And uh, she was a stalwart all the way through. She was very, very cool, calm, and courageous. She, she, wanna, she went on every foreign trip w w that, I could, that I went on, and she was always, uh, uh, in fact, uh, she, uh, she attended most of the uh, meetings uh, uh, with, uh, I was going to say with Khrushchev, I think she did, uh, but uh, no, she didn't. But uh, she would find uh, 
we would have, we would have a schedule that would that would would uh, take her to uh, children's events, hospitals, schools, uh, things that she had an interest in. Uh, in some cases, she would she would go with the vice president uh, uh, as she did uh, in in uh, with uh, when when the Khrushchevs took us down the. Uh, uh, on the boat down the river, uh, she was uh, hard to describe, but she 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 was not active in the uh, political uh, world, but she uh, she really uh, shook, took an interest in people, particularly children, and uh, she was always well received wherever she went. Absolutely furious, uh, not for himself, or not, uh, and, and uh, concerned, but it was all, all of his emotions were aimed at uh, the Venezuelan government for letting this happen. They could have stopped it, they didn't. They were letting the communist part of their government run the show, and uh, they were able to strip us of our protection, where the, the police melted away and, uh, and uh, the army was never there. So his, uh, his reaction was that it was a serious affront to the, to the uh, stature and the image of the United States of America. And that's what, uh, what was the, the, the source of his anger. Uh, he he never he never thought of it as I remember in terms of our the, the personal safety of the individual that was included obviously he was he was he was uh, there was some concern about that but primarily he was concerned about uh, what this was going to do to the image of the American of the United States of America and particularly in South America in, in Latin America. Well, we went into the, uh, Khrushchev came and we were escorting him uh, around the, uh, the, the, the displays and we, the argument, it really was a, 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 an argument uh, that it was a running argument that the, 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 the vice president had with Khrushchev, uh, basically about communism versus uh, uh, democracy uh, and war uh, uh, and things of this nature. So it was a running, they covered a number of subjects, but it was when they got in to the kitchen, which was a, a model kitchen with all the latest uh, uh, appliances, refrigerators, uh, uh, freezers, uh, uh, the, the various utensils that operate uh, by power, uh, mixers and so forth, uh, the stoves, the uh, uh, washers and dryers that were, he, he, Khrushchev did not believe that that was typically American, or that that was typical of what America had. And this was his line, that, uh, that uh, they were going to, uh, that that was not t typical of uh, what, we, what we really had and that in time they would, they would come up to our level and pass us and he said we'd wave to you as we go by. But uh, that was, in the, then the discussion uh, of course it was, that occurred in the, in the kitchen was when uh, uh, Nixon, uh, Nixon uh, did uh, confront Khrushchev uh, very positively, but in a res in a respectful manner, and he 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 did uh, respect the fact that in uh, in worldly terms uh, or in political terms, geopolitical terms, uh, Khrushchev was senior to him. He was the uh, president and prime minister and everything else, where the vice president was vice president. 
So he, he, he maintained respect for, the, for that particular difference, but at the same time, he did not rise to the bait of, uh, uh, of, uh, of making the discussion uh, uh, more, more uh, oh, what's the right word, more uh, oh, more violent for one of a one a better better term. It was, uh, I guess, the way I, I described it. It, it was like a, 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 a people. Uh, it was like a, 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 a fight with one side had a cleaver and the other side had a fencing foil. He, the, the vice president, was very adept and deft in what he did. His answers. He, uh, he never lost his temper, he never raised his voice, uh, but he finally, uh, I think the famous quote was, he, he was right up very close to Khrushchev face to face and he said, you don't know everything. And that was, uh, that became the quote. Well, uh, I, of course, I wasn't with him on the trip around the world, but uh, knowing, the, knowing uh, Richard Nixon as I knew him, he is a, a sponge in the sense of, of information. He, he soaks it up. He, uh, he does his homework when he's going to visit a country. He does his homework and he, he learns from every, from every appointment that he has in every country that he has. And so that around the world, he picked up I don't know how many countries. I went didn't go with him, but you can you can rest assured that he he retained the knowledge that was important in each country. So that when uh, when uh, when it came later on, that was that was a good basis for building the reputation that he had. Uh, is as a foreign policy expert because uh, he had been there and he hadn't just gone sightseeing. Uh, that, was a, that type of thing was a minimum uh, part of, of his travels. He preferred substance rather than uh, uh, sightseeing. I, I, uh, I can only say that, that they were experiences that uh, are most people never have uh, when you when you can get uh, a discussion uh, a a substantive argument for one of a better term uh, that uh, it gets national gets worldwide attention uh, that that's pretty good uh, ba a pretty good uh, part of your resume and uh, certainly. Caracas uh, was uh, that, that's a you pick two classic examples uh, in Caracas the world was focused on us they the people thought and then well, actually uh, President Nick, President Eisenhower did move some troops he moved them within the United States he moved them from I think uh, closer to down in Florida so that they could make a a run to Venezuela if they had to, but uh, we almost had uh, uh, s uh, paratroopers coming down there, almost, and uh, so that he had that. And then with Khrushchev, uh, later, uh, it, you, you can't think of a of any more prominent person to have a, a substantive discussion with. Then uh, the prime, the premier, or what, uh, whatever he was, uh, the, the you know the secretary, the general secretary of the Communist Party, and the uh, uh, the the leader of uh, uh, the Soviet Union, head of the Soviet uh, Soviet Union. So that the, 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 each of these uh, are, I would say, they're like uh, the victory patches that you see put on football players' helmets when they've made a great play. That's a rude way, or that's a rough way of putting it, but it, these were, these certainly were individual elements that he can chalk up 
as, as good experiences and, and, uh, and, and proud to have done what he did when he was there. He faced down, the, in, 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 in uh, Venezuela, he faced down the hunter and told him that they didn't, they didn't uh, understand what freedom was. And he faced down uh, Khrushchev uh, on national or international TV and uh, made his points. Uh, that's another star for the helmet. I mean, he, uh, those are things that the average person just doesn't get an opportunity to do. Pr principally, it was to execute the, uh, uh, see, I was basically, a, 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 when, we're at, when we're at home, I, I, I handled his appointments. I handled his, uh, uh, I, uh, I cleared his appointments with him directly. I accompanied him to events, uh, just about every one. Uh, on, the tr on the campaign, the campaign schedule was laid out by Jim Bassett and it was executed by us. So what I would do is to take what Jim had prepared for, had t said we're going to do, and uh, modified it as the vice president wanted, but, but we executed the plan that the, uh, uh, the, the headquarters had, had come up with. Uh, of course, we had latitude to change it if we had to, but uh, it was my responsibility to, to move him to, act, to satisfy that plan or, or that, uh, that, that schedule. Uh, he, uh, the, the last day before inauguration, he and I discussed that perhaps I would lead the Air, leave the Air Force and, and, and go to work for him. Uh, I, uh, I said I would, uh, I was, of course I was honored to have the, 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 that happen, but I loved the Air Force, so I was, uh, it turned out that he was going to California and, the, and, the, uh, and live in Los Angeles and the, air, and the airfield that I was assigned to, the fighter wing, was in Victorville, California. So we agreed that we would keep that an open subject and we would see each other out there and uh, if I if, and talk it over and see where it went, and if if it uh, looked like I should do it, I I would would have done it. Uh, that is to resign, or uh, I'd have to resign. I didn't I didn't have enough time to retire. But as it turned out, we worked together quite a bit because uh, he called me one day, and oh, I had uh, first of all about. About seven or eight months after I got there, uh, uh, the uh, uh, the engine quit on a uh, on me about a mile and a half short of the runway, so I I, I crashed and uh, got a broken back. So I was uh, in the hospital, and uh, he came to see me. And then when I was released from the hospital, he called me up and. Uh, he said, "I I just don't have any time to myself down here." He said, "I need to finish." the final chapters of the book, The Six Crises. He said, is there a place up there where I could come and have a couple of weeks just by myself? I said, yeah, sure, sir, sir, so sure. So I went over to uh, Apple Valley, and there was a place there called the Apple Valley Inn, and I talked to the uh, manager and told him what I wanted. And he said, yep, and he gave me a bungalow. He said he had a bungalow, uh, and it was quiet, and he was that he'd be left alone. Uh, then I got a call from, I guess this guy was the the czar of Apple Valley, uh, a man named uh, Bass, who was a wonderful person, and he had got wind of this, and he took over. He called me and said, uh, "I've got a better plan," and he took me out to. Uh, the middle of the golf course there, and it was a beautiful ha house. And he said, "This is where he'll be, and there will nobody will go around, uh, go 
around him, nor up to bother him. And the idea was that he would dictate, and then in the evening, my, my wife and I would drive over and maybe have a drink with him, uh, and I would take the tapes, give him some new tapes, and I'd take the ones that he had dictated and put them on a bus, and the bus would go down to uh, Los Angeles, and they'd pick them up down there and give them to Rose Woods, and she would type them out, and she'd send up more tapes, and we did that for about two weeks, and uh, that's how we finished the book. So uh, we, and then we stayed in close touch. I'd see him maybe every other month or something like that. It was, uh, I was over in, in uh, uh, I was over in, in uh, Germany and uh, I was a director of safety for the United States Air Forces in Europe. And uh, the election, when the election night was election, when the election night was uh, election was over, you know, I think it was the next night or the ne or, or the maybe a day or two after. I've forgotten exactly, but it was very close to when it happened. I got a call from Bob Finch that uh, he said that the president would like me to come back and uh, uh, be uh, uh, his military aide, uh, and so of course I went. And uh, that was later changed to military assistant. So that was, but that's I, so that's what I was doing. And we came right back. It was, uh, I was only over there four and a half months. What I did, because I I knew how the White House worked pretty well from my time in, in the uh, uh, in the uh, vice president's office, and I knew there were things that that I would personally change if I ever had the chance. And one of it was that the the various military elements that support the White House were not being monitored by uh, any one person. So I said I would take the job if I had, only if I went to Haldeman and I told him that I'll take the job if I can have full responsibility and authority over anything that's military connected with the White House in any way with the obvious exception of policy which was Kissinger and that had never been done before so once I had done that that raised the, the, that raised my level of, uh, of responsibility and uh, that, that's when they raised it to uh, the uh, assistant Well, I, uh, I, I did the, well, uh, Henry Kissinger went on the first secret trip, and that was secret trip, in July. It's just a small party, him and Lord and a secret service, I guess. Or, and then Kissinger had a trip in October, which I went on, which was an advanced trip. Ron Walker and a whole bunch of us, we went over, but, and then we spent, I think, almost 10 days, and we were preparing for the, uh, the trip. But the trip wasn't until February, and I was leaving. I left the White House in uh, uh, the 1st of February, and uh, uh, went back to the Air Force. So my successor made the actual trip with the president, but I was in on the I was uh, in on the uh, original uh, advance in October. Put it this way: I th I think what he did was the first real movement to counter communism. The first meaningful effort uh, to, to really counter them. And I, re I, I mean that for, uh, for, for the opening to China. I mean it for uh, the way he handled Vietnam, the way, the way he, he got us out of there. Uh, 
for the way he uh, took on Khrushchev in, in his home territory. And of course, then there was a, the Hiss case that was anti-communism. I think he's the first one who ever made any real progress and set up uh, 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 that con contributed to that. I think that would, I think that, so foreign policy, in my opinion, is going to be clearly his legacy, but I think he's going to get more credit for the, uh, 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 what he's done uh, uh, to counter communism.